There's very few uh, parts in that process that we can play a role. We know that the General Assembly is really taking a hard look at those bills, yeah. and we're very interested to see what comes out of that. No mention of the governor's juvenile crime reform as the Baltimore City Council signals their support for two other state bills, one that requires just cause for evictions and another that cracks down on out-of-state vehicles. This morning, lifelong Baltimore resident Pastor P.M. Smith is joining us live to weigh in. Pastor Smith, good morning. Good morning, Ms. Megan. Now, we did hear from council members. They insist that their absence of, of public endorsement should not signal a lack of support here. With that said, are you surprised that there wasn't any mention of juvenile crime? I'm not surprised, Ms. Megan. Baltimore City has a problem, and it's not landlord-tenant relationships, it's not clean buses, and it's not uh, out-of-town tags. It's crime. They've done nothing to address the matter of crime. And what's troubling to me is the cries of the parents, the pleas of the police officers, the input from probation has not brought their attention to that. We have elected a closet of clowns and cowards. They don't have the strength to address the issues, and that's because they're weak. Let me try to look at both sides of this, uh, Pastor Smith. We know that this is working its way through the State House right now. In fact, today in Annapolis, the House could vote on 14 amendments to, to the governor's juvenile crime bill. Do you think that because they see this moving through the state, that it really wasn't what was on their docket at that moment? I see your face and I hear you, but Ms. Megan, thinking about what they might be thinking. This is Baltimore City. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stokes is in charge of education. He's done nothing. Mr. Mark Conway is in charge of public safety. He's done nothing. The mayor stole the conduit. The president of the city council uh, tried to do an in run, in run around terms. Mr. Bill, the comptroller, hasn't audited anybody. They have done nothing. And the damnable thing is, of the 14 members, 10 are people of color, and they don't ha have any concern for what's happening in this community to our young folk who are also people of color. The only one I give credit for standing up is Mr. Slifer, and he's from the 5th District. Baltimore City, with those others, we have no representation, no leaders whatsoever. Pastor Smith, you've lived here all your life. You clearly have a, a pulse of the city. You, you work here. You know a lot of the people. We mentioned that evictions were one of the things they wanted to take a look at. Do you think that is important? We know juvenile crime certainly is something that, that we are focusing on, but is that something that needs to be addressed right now? Landlords don't want property here. Tenants don't want to live here because of crime. Crime is the environment that will set the tone. Public safety is the number one issue. Now, we need to say to them, May is coming. I'm not giving, I'm not going to reward you for doing nothing. I'm not going to reward you for not standing up for me. I sent you there to fight for me, and if you're not going to fight for me, I'm going to fight against you. Re elect. Put all of them out except Mr. Slifer. All of them got to go except Mr. Slifer. It's the strongest way to make your voice heard. Pastor Smith, we appreciate you weighing in. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Megan. All right.